WNDS Sports and Flat State Megabucks present Candlepin Skins. It's bowling with a whole new twist as New England's best bowlers battle for cash prizes in every box. Candlepin Skins is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Londonderry Bowling Center and week two of our new season of Candlepin Skins here on the Winds of New England. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. So glad that you could join us. Uh, continuous format, not like the uh, Tournament of Champions format in singles where you win a ladder and then you leave until the Tournament of Champions. Here you can keep going and going and going as long as you finish in the top two in total pinfall. And, of course, there's skins competition going as well. So, Dan, for our four bowlers today, we have Joe Ashline and Don Richmond, our two high scorers coming back from last week. Week, and they'll be joined by Bob Whitcomb and Paul Barassa. That's right, and they don't have to dress up like a bunny either to keep going. They just have to have the <laughs> highest, highest total pinfall for the two games. So the, the game of bowling is still with us, and the sidelight is the skins, and that's what makes it exciting. All right, let's run over the rules real quickly for those of you who might not be familiar with our skins format. Again, the bowlers compete individually. They'll be bowling one box at a time. Each box is worth cash. The high box, the high score in each box wins the skin or the amount of cash assigned to that box. Any ties carry over. For instance, if two bowlers roll a spare and that's the high score in the box, the cash carries over until the next box. The top two in total pinfall at the end of two games. We roll two games here on Candlepin Skins. The uh, top two in total pinfall after two games will come back the next week with a chance to earn more prize money and continue their streak going. Now, here's the money situation. First three boxes of each game are worth $10 each. The next three boxes worth $15 each. The next three worth $25 each. And the big 10th box in each game worth $50 each. And of course, there is the possibility for big money and carryovers. We had a, a $110 skin last week. Yes, and he's gone. <laughs> it's Tim Lipke. Won the most in skins last week, but he's not here because he didn't have the total pinfall. It really is very interesting. Uh, the guys who win the most money aren't necessarily the guys who do the most scoring. It all depends on when you do your marking. That depends on how much money you win. All right, we'll be back with the first of our two games. Our four bowlers are ready. We'll be back on Candlepin Skins in a minute. All right, here's a look at our computer. Thanks once again to Alden Warner and CompuScore for his hard work over the summer to get our skins computer ready. That's the way it looks. In the right-hand column there, you'll be able to keep track of who wins the skins during each game. Joe Ashline, set to start our match today. Hello, just the 8-10. <laughs> Paul Barassa. You notice also, we didn't get a chance to mention this last week, but uh, now here in the skins format, each of the bowlers is wearing a different color shirt, so that will help you uh, pick out your favorites and keep track of the bowlers as we move along because things do move quickly, especially here in the first game when we have two bowlers on the approach at once. Joe finishes with a nine box. And so does Paul Barassa. So Bob Whitcomb and Don Richmond will step up and They'll each have a chance to uh, win this skin. Bob Whitcomb right there. It's been uh, a couple of years, a little less than two years since we've seen Bob. And now he'll take his shot on lane 30. One, seven, nine, and ten, and see where the wood settles down. Don Richmond on lane 29. I'm gonna have to have Cindy Sissom go down and uh, remove that piece of wood that's come way out on lane 30 for Bob Whitcomb to shoot. Well, a couple of interesting leaves here. I don't know if I'd call either one of them really a spare leave, although Don Richmond might have a, an opportunity with the way that wood is turned on the 5-7. Bob Whitcomb has a mess down here, the 1, 7, 9, and 10. Good effort. Now it's all oh, Don Richmond's. Makes a spare, he's got it. Nope. He may have a chance with a 10 box, though. 
There's a nine for Bob, so it's down to this pin. This pin would win the skin. That's it. Ten pins, ten dollars. <laughs> John Richmond gets ten dollars and some abuse from the crowd here. <laughs> I don't know if it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, off the target is Paul Barassa, but leaves himself the 1 8. Joe Ashline on lane 29 leaves the 5 9 for a spare. Paul, for the spare? No. Hard to believe. Oh, luck. The 8 pin is still there. Oh, and no, Joe misses also. Might have heard Joe as soon as he <laughs> threw it. Oh, no. Ten box for Paul. Likewise for Joe. I have a feeling we'll get at least one mark before this show is over. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when, but it'll happen sometime. Well, it's going to take a mark right now to win the skin, strike or a spare. Boy, last week we had... Hardly anything but marks for a while, it seems. Nice for sure. Big scores last week. Don Richmond had one of those big scores a week ago and starts with a solid nine drop. Bob Whitcomb off target to the left. One, three, five, and eight. No wood to help him. Don Richmond now for the 10 pin for a spare. No. no. That's a nine box. This for the skin. Oh, that close. <laughs> and we'll have our first carry over with a pair of tens. And there's another one. Well, what do you know? We have a four-way tie. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yes. That's right. It is a four-way tie. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Everybody at 19 after two boxes. The computer will be corrected. The next time you see it, it'll be right. This is a $20 skin now on a carryover. Big first ball from Paul Barassa leaves the five pin. Spare for Joe Ashline. And the spare for Paul Barassa. Now the Bulls are getting the hang of this thing, all right? <laughs> Two tie, all tie. <laughs> Bob Whitcomb drops eight. It'll take a strike here to win the skin for Don Richmond. Nope. He'll carry it over again. One and two left for Bob Whitcomb. Oh, yes. Oh. Just barely nips the two pin. Had a chance to go spares across the board, but Don had a unable to convert. And it'll be a nine instead. You want to hit him this time? Don't go that way. Paul Brassa filling on a spare. Oh my! Big strike. See you. Joe Ashline trying to match it. Ooh, almost. And Joe misses the single. And it's still there, a nine box. Here's Paul Barassa's shot. And this happened, well, we won't get a chance to see it, but his strike now leads the skin. The computer is uh, back on target now. I only got my fingers limbered up. We're ready to go. Off target to the ref left for, our, actually to the right for Don. Richmond and Paul Brassa will win that skin with a strike. Bob Whitcomb almost tied it. The nine drop. And it's still there. 
10 box for Don Richmond. He's still looking for his first mark. And a 10 for Bob Whitcomb as well. So that was a $35 carryover skin, and it goes to Paul Barrasso with the strike. Now this fifth box will be worth $15. Joe Ashline will shoot at the diamond. Three, five, six, and nine. Nope. Paul Barassa, of course, working on a strike for the spare. Oh, great effort. Great effort. Great shot. Great shot. Joe Ashline with the nine box. What a great spare for Paul Barassa. Here's another look. Catches it on the inside. The ball goes down and takes out the four pin. Usually it takes the four and the seven, but he needs some help on the seven pin. Finally goes for spare. Three marks in a row for Paul Barassa now. Bob Whitcomb. Don Richmond still looking for his first mark. Well, he wants something to hit the five pin. Let's see where the wood settles down for Don. Meanwhile, Bob's going to shoot at his spare. Well, it'll be up to Don Richmond here to try and have the skin. Paul Barassa with that spare. Got a chance. Carrying the ball off the wood for the five, but then the wood's got to carry the other two. Huh? Nope. So it's another skin. $15 this time for Paul. Bob Whitcomb records a 10. And so does Don Richmond. And that brings us to our first break. Let's take a peek at the scores here. Ball Barrasso with that outstanding spare. He's got three marks in a row and he's also picked up $50 in skins prize money already. He's got the overall lead. Still very close here in the early going. Don't go away. Well, it'll be Paul Barassa and Joe Ashline up on the lanes to restart the action here in box number six. Paul trying to keep his string of marks alive. He's going to take a great shot to do that. Joe Ashline for oh, the strike. Yeah. $15 skin here in the sixth box. Ten box for Paul Barassa. So the strike of Joe Ashline sits there and Bob and Don will shoot at it. You can see where Paul Barassa leads this spring at 84 through six. Joe Ashline is 66 plus that bonus ball is coming on the strike. Bob Whitcomb right through the center for the spread eagle, and it'll be a $15 skin for Joe Ashline. Spare for Don. Oh, great effort. Bob Whitcomb, spare on the spread eagle. Oh, great shot. Two spares, a spectacular one for Bob Whitcomb, but Take Joe Ashline wins the skin. Played, they actually played on the inside, and everything came off the right side wall to the left, and finally knocking down the two pin. But Joe Ashline trumps the two spears with his strike. To the seventh box now, a $25 skin. Paul Barassa pulled that ball to the left. Not quite for Joe. And a 10 box for Joe Ashline. 85 through seven for Joe. Paul Brassa with the eight box. And 92 through seven. Now Bob Whitcomb and Don Richmond come up, each working on spares and also with the skin wide open here, a mark could take it. But I had to. What's, what's, 
keeping the five minutes going and going. Bob Whitcomb, right on the head pin. Everything but the 10. Don Richmond gets them all. That'll be the skin. Strike on spare and a $25 skin for Don Richmond. Spare for Bob Whitcomb after the nine drop. All bowlers are heating up finally. Very close now. 14 pins separates all four bowlers, but the one that's 14 pins behind Don Richmond will be working on a strike. Another $25 skin here in the eighth. Neither are these guys with much to shoot at here. And they'll both be open. Six box for Paul. And a six box for Joe. <laughs> a seven could take it. <laughs> Once again, Bob and Don each come up working on marks. and drooling at the fact that the other bowlers only got six boxes looking for that other skin. Oh, right in the pocket, look at this. That was on a strike. Here's Bob Whitcomb on his spare. Ooh, only two. This could be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it could be very interesting. Look out. That's a six <laughs> fill on the strike. Don Richmond. And there's seven. So at least the six is no good. <laughs> Don Richmond with a seven. This ball for the win. <laughs> he needs two of them. No, he only needs one. One. He right. only needed one. That's right. He got two for the nine. Bob Whitcomb wins the $25 skin with a nine. <laughs> How about that? I thought only Tim Lipke could do that. <laughs> $25 more here in the ninth. That's the first skin, by the way, for Bob Whitcomb. Joe Ashline, very close to a strike. Paul Barassa punches through. 1-5-8 for Paul Barassa. Joe Ashline looking at just that seven pin, and he's got a choice. He's got a piece of wood to the right, but I'm sure Joe will shoot at the pin. I'm sure he'll play the wood. <laughs> Joe, we can have a talk afterwards. He's getting some boos from the oh, fans, yeah. I think. Tough crowd, tough crowd out there. <laughs> they are really giving Joe the business here. He better hope he doesn't win the skin with that spare. It's a nine box for Paul Barassa. Paul, after a great start, has cooled off a little bit. <laughs> Biggest target. Twenty-five dollar skin. Oh, we weren't betting on the back end, though. We were doing it. Guys know us playing. <laughs> Biggest target. Bob Whitcomb. Oh, oh strike! It's not going to make any difference. <laughs> now Joe Ashland all of a sudden is rooting for Don to match him with a strike. He does not. So Bob Whitcomb, after winning the other skin with a nine, wins this one with a strike. And the nine box for Don Richmond, and even 100 through nine. So we move to the tenth. But before we do, we'll get a look at that strike. Oh, just three quarters on the head pin, dead in the one three pocket. Tenth box worth fifty dollars. We've had six consecutive boxes won. That will not happen very often, I don't think. No. Just that uh, first carryover, that three-box carryover early in the game. Oh, good effort by Paul Brass on the three, six, and seven. Wow. Joe really bounced that one up there. 
So both of these bowlers will be open. Paul Barassa with a 10. Joe Ashline with an 8. 115 for Joe Ashline, 117 for Paul Barassa. Looks like Bob Whitcomb's going to have the lead after this first game, unless Don Richmond does something spectacular in the 10th. Well, there's a the strike. And Don has won himself a $50 skin here in the 10th. He will throw two more balls on that strike after Bob Whitcomb finishes. Ooh, just a seven fill on Bob's strike. And the nine box, 124. This uh, may very well all be within 10 pins here by the time uh, Don finishes his strike here in the 10th. Going for the spare now. Now he'll settle for an eight. So a 118 for Don Richmond. He wins the $50 skin in the 10th. And as you can see, we've had seven consecutive skins won here, and the scores are very, very close. Just nine pins separating first from last. With one game still to go on Candlepin Skins, we'll be back in a minute. Well, everybody got in on the skins cash in the first game. Don Richmond leading the way with $85. Paul Barassa got four skins. He got the only carryover uh, skin for his $50 total. Bob Whitcomb got his 50 uh, toward the end. And uh, Joe Ashline also cashed in for one for $15. So everybody on the board and a very, very close match also. Bob Whitcomb in first with 124. Joe Ashline in fourth with 115. Keep in mind, the total pinfall important. And ah, nice spare for Joe Ashline. Total pinfall important because the top two finishers come back next week with a chance to earn more money. Nice shot made by Joe Ashline on the 3-6-7. Piece of wood in between that helped a little. Now Paul Barassa on lane 29 through the middle. This is a $10 skin, box one. Had, we had seven consecutive skins won to end that first game. Six box for Paul. Paul really uh, had things going early at three marks in a row in the first game early and actually had the lead at the halfway point of the first game, but he's cooled off a little bit since then. Toward the end of the game, this is the bowler that was the hottest. Right. And let's see, 710 and all kinds of dead wood on the plate. I think he's going to have to go after the 10 pin and catch as much of the wood as he can. Not enough. Not enough to throw it over there. So Joe Ashline leads the skin with a spare with one ball the remaining. That's Don Richmond. Nine for Bob. Well, Don Richmond needs a strike to take the skin or a spare to carry it over. The highest seeded bowler from the roll off will always be the bowler in this last position, the fourth position. And uh, where Tim Lipke was eliminated last week, Don Richmond was the number two seed coming in, so he has the, uh, the cleanup position here. And we could, we could have an endless debate, I suppose, as to whether it's to your advantage to be in this position, but... 3-6-10 for the carryover. No. Nope. Joe Ashline will take it. It'll be worth $10 for Joe. And a nine box for Don Richmond. Uh, 
Joe Ashline, this is his third consecutive week on skins, dating back to uh, last spring. Seven fill on his mark. Two, four, five, triangle left for Joe, trying to make it two marks in a row, and again, put a little pressure on the other three for the skin, and boy, I thought he carried the four pin. He did too. <laughs> <laughs> Look in his face, he certainly thought he had it right around the four pin. A nine box for Joe this time. One in the ten. Well, <laughs> put a ten up there, you never know. Oh, too much pressure. The nine box. <laughs> so a couple of nines here in the second. This is a ten dollar skin. Bob Whitcomb. Well, he'll have an opportunity at a spare here. There's wood on the deck for the high-low jack. See if he can make it fly around enough. Oh, oh my. my. Two pieces of wood came together and prevented him from making the shot. But this to take the lead for the skin. No, it's another nine. So Don Richmond with a chance to steal one like he did in the uh, first game. That close to the spare for Bob Whitcomb. The very first box of this match, we had this same situation. Three nines and then Don Richmond threw the ten box to win it. Well, he took a lot of heat from the crowd. Maybe he's going <laughs> to say, oh, I'm not going to do this again. <laughs> Almost. Well, Ooh. here it is, the single with the plank in it for $10. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Listen. <laughs> He's got it. Hey. A $10 skin with the 10 bucks. Take the skin. <laughs> Don remains in the uh, skins lead with $95 now. $400 in prize money in total in the two games for skins. Each bowler, by the way, when they are eliminated, gets a uh, consolation prize also of $50 as a bonus. Joe Ashline looking at the nine pin for a spare. Got it. Barassa again to the left. Well, it looks like he's losing his footing a little when he takes that first step. Oh, yes, for the spare to match Joe Ashline's spare. So now it will take a strike to win this skin. Nice bounce back there for Paul. Certainly was. Pulled the ball badly to the left of the first ball, but recovered right in the one three pocket for the spare and the possible carryover. So it'll take a strike. It's a ten dollar skin here in the third. Not to lose track of the scores. This the match is extremely close by all four bowlers. We'll catch you up when everyone's completed this fourth frame. Bob with the nine. He's got three nines in this box. There you see the totals at the bottom. Remember, Don Richmond has not bowled the fourth frame yet, so he needs a strike to take the skin. And uh -oh. he almost got it. So we'll have a carryover. After a nine in a row <laughs> without a carryover. Ten box for Don, and as we go back to the scores, those 
running two game totals are at the bottom of your screen. That is the uh, actual up to date pinfall total for the bowlers. Now you see that Joe and Bob are tied at 151, but Joe has a ball here on the spare. So he will assume the lead with this fill ball. And it is a big one, nine. Also got a piece of wood way out in front, which uh, will not affect the shot, I don't think, but it's going to be out of his way anyway. Cindy Sissom down to remove it. Joe looking for uh, a second mark in a row for the first time in this match. And he's got it on the single. Paul Barassa from Pepperell, Mass. The break there when the th two pin went down gives him nine fill on the spare, but also a good chance for another spare to tie Joe Ashline. Got it. As you can see, those two bowlers tied last box to create the carryover. Now it's going to take a strike by either Bob or Don to win the skin. But still, the match is extremely close on total pinfall. Oh, that's, oh, it. Yes. that's it. Bob Whitcomb has his strike. First mark of the game for Bob, and it may be enough to win the skin. Don Richmond has something to say about that. Needs a strike for the carryover, otherwise it's Bob Whitcomb's. Oh! <laughs> that close! <laughs> So it is a $25 skin for Bob Whitcomb after the carryover. And there's two singles in a row yeah. that Don has missed for spares. Time running out. Remember the top two come back next week. We may not decide the top two until we come right down to the end. You see, we've got marks everywhere and the score is still very, very close. Oh well. Joe Ashline now working on his spare. Right to the game. This time through the middle, just three. This is a $15 skin, the fifth box. And Joe works hard to get a nine. Stout Joe. Paul Barassa now working on a spare. He's got two marks in a row. Finding the range again. Well, off target left, but he just leaves himself to one, three, and six. Good seven fill on the spare, trying to make it three in a row, as Doug said, outside. Ooh. Well, no marks yet in this fifth box. Bob Whitcomb comes up now working on a strike. And a chance really to take the lead in the match really with another mark. He'll shoot at the 2, 4, 7, and 10. With the wood, this might happen. Let's see. Oh, very close. And it's a nine box, so the nine is a carryover right now, unless Don Richmond can get at least a 10. Here's a look at that spare attempt by Bob. Just missing on the 10 pin. Well, let's see. Don Richmond has uh, already won a skin with a 10 box, and that's <laughs> all he needs here. As another. <laughs> More importantly, he's like, he's going to want to mark, because he's the low man on the totem pole right now at 157. 
Yeah, you're right. That's uh, really of more importance, I think, to Don right now is the fact that he hasn't had a mark in a while. This is going to be very tough. The 1, 7, 8, and 10 with a piece of wood aiming at him. He's able to drive it back, but guess what? He, he needs, needs a 10 to win the skin. <laughs> he needs both of these. Well, and actually, he's going to go after the 10 pin in the wood. Let's see if he gets the help on the 7. Nope. No. It's a carryover with nines, and with no marks up here in the fifth, we'll get a true indicator down at the bottom of the screen. As we go to the computer, those are the combined scores, the total running scores now, with five boxes to go in the match. And you can see Joe Ashline leads Bob Whitcomb by just three, who leads Paul Barassa by just three more, and Don Richmond is hardly out of it either. Five boxes to go to the finish. We'll be back in a minute. Joe Ashline now. Very, very tight match here on Candlepin Skins. If you weren't with us last week, by the way, we uh, gave a little bit of the history of the Skins format here on the Winds of New England. We tried this uh, as a four-week uh, series back in the spring, and the response was uh, so overwhelming that... Uh, we decided, what the heck? Let's make it a regular thing. So here we are every Saturday at noon here on the Winds with Candlepin Skins. Something a little different. And I think uh, it's safe to say, Dan, that the bowlers are getting a big kick out of it, too. Yes, the bowlers really like it. And Paul Barras on lane 30. Good looking first ball. Oh, yeah. That was one of those balls that as soon as it left his hand, you really thought that it might be something good. It took a little while. He finally kicked out the eight pin last, but that was a great first ball for Paul Barassa. Coming off the right side wall for the five and eight. Bob Whitcomb making his bid to try to tie for the skin. So unless Don Richmond can, can throw a strike, it will be Paul Barassa's skin. This is a $30 carryover, by the way. $30 skin here in the sixth. Ten box for Bob. Oh, nice. Boy, it's great to see uh, among the crowd here at the Londonderry Bowling Center, Peter Flynn. That's right. Don Richmond trying for a strike to carry over the skin. More importantly, a mark to get him back in the match as far as total pinfall goes, and it's going to be a tough one. Two and four on the left. Three, six, ten on the right. No wood. Seven box for Don, and he still does not have a mark here in the second game. I wow. said nine, not five. <laughs> <laughs> the strike for Paul Barassa gives him the $30 skin in the sixth. Now we move to the seventh box, which is a $25 skin. Joe Ashline missing the head pin to the right. Really, it's anybody's game right now, and boy, Joe doesn't want to have a bad frame. From top to the bottom, it's only 19 pin difference. Joe Ashline at 192, Paul Brass at 186, 189 for Bob Whitcomb, and 173 for Don. Seven box for Joe. Don Richmond. <laughs> On a strike. And he'll shoot at the triangle now. Watch the wood kick forward. <laughs> kick the six into the three. The five pin was the object, wasn't it? That's sure. <laughs> you got to know how to play the play the wood. Light hit for Bob Whitcomb. Trips out the two pin, leaves the ten. He converts this, of course. He might have the skin with Paul Barassa. Of course, Don Richmond will still have a shot. 
Going right at, no, no, he did catch the wood. And still got the 10 pin for the spare. So unless uh, Don fires a strike here, it'll be a carryover. I'm sure Don would love to fire a strike here. <laughs> For not only that reason, but the match itself still has a chance. And, oh boy, solid nine pin drop, leaves the 10. And this is almost a must for him going into the final two frames. Oh yes, great shot on the single, the 10 pin for the spare, it is a carryover. We move to box number eight, which is now worth $50. <laughs> and no one can safely say they're coming back next week. <laughs> That's right, you're right. Joe Ashline can't afford <laughs> two guys a very one tie with him, one seven pins ahead. And not out of it at 183 is Don Richmond working on a mark. Like a merry go round now. Well, 710, three pieces of wood. I have to use probably the one that's closest to us on the right. I would think you'd have to come up high and left hand tip. I think if you go low, you're going to leave the 10 pin standing. The ball's going to go around it, but let's see how Joe plays it. He's going low. And oh, and so got it. <laughs> Chris, I didn't realize he throws the ball that hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think maybe Joe just listened to what you thought and then he went the other way. <laughs> Actually, the wood clipped it. Yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> well, Barassa, this is on a spare. Just five. Chance to convert this though. Let's see. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Three marks in a row for Paul Barassa. The five box, a uh, five fill. I'm sure he wasn't happy with, but he converts for the spare. And I think at this point they're not even thinking of that skin. They're just fighting to survive next week. He still carries a slight edge over Joe Ashline. Paul. I mean Bob Whitcomb filling a spare with, with nine. Just the seven pin. Oh no. Nope. No. Nine box. Clip the wood in the channel. Lost that one to the left. So he's at 217. Don Richmond has to keep pace. Needs a big fill and another mark. And if he should throw a strike, he'll win a $50 skin here. Nope. So we'll have another carryover, an eight fill for Don on his spare. And he needs this to keep pace. Yes, big mark right there. Three spares up in the eighth. We move to the ninth, which will be worth $75 now on the carryover. And more importantly, it's just a really great close. battle going you can, here. You can see 217 is the second place, but he doesn't have a mark work and the other bowlers do. So this is extremely close. Joe Ashline working on a spare. Oh boy. Oh wow. Just five. The five pin, four, six, seven, and 10. And this is a makeable shot. Go right at the five pin. Yes! Oh, he was a little far left. He still made it. Here in the ninth for Joe Ashline. I thought he might be too far left. left and I wanted it. Well, you just heard him say it. Thank you, Joe. You bailed <laughs> me out. <laughs> Paul Barassa on a spare. He carries seven. He's trying to keep pace with Joe Ashline. Keep Joe behind him. Oh. And he misses his spare opportunity down the one, three, and five. Oh, boy. There it was for the 10 box. This is just too close to call still here. Paul Barassa in the lead, but he's open in the ninth. So Joe Ashline would need another mark to catch him. However, Paul still has to bowl the 10th as well. Oh, oh look at this. It's a strike, Bob Whitcomb. Not only for total pinfall, but he stands to win the skin, which is $75, unless Don Richmond can match it with a strike of his own. Looked a little full there. Trips the four pin, then the three, and finally the six. Don Richmond got to keep pace. Needs a big fill and continue to mark. Light hit. Let's see. It's going to be eight. No strike. Bob Whitcomb takes the $75 skin. 
Panther. Right now, these bowlers thinking about coming back next week. That's the goal right now. For the spare. Yes! Oh, yes! What, what a, a shot. <laughs> Keep his hopes alive. Get a replay and at that spare. Got the seven pin, which I thought was the more difficult one. Came back for the for the nine pin. $50 skin here in the 10th box and total pinfall still very much up for grabs here. That is just a three fill for Joe Ashline on his spare. He threw that ball, I think, even harder than he normally does. <laughs> he lofted it further out in the lane and I think that left the ball to the right, missing the head pin. Uh, these are all important now. He, at this point, is going to need a lot of help from Bob Whitcomb. Nine box for Joe, 121, and a two-game total of 236. And as you can see, that may or may not be good enough. Paul Barassa. And he kicks out the seven pin. He'll shoot at the 10 for a spare. Now, Paul is already in the lead, but remember, Bob Whitcomb is working on a strike. I was just going to say with that nine pin drop, I said, well, Paul's in, but he's not. Because... Uh, Don Richmond even could throw a strike and then follow with another one and pass both of them. So, a long ways from over. Oh, big spare right there yeah, for Paul right. Barassa. You're right there. That's a real big one. Not only gets himself the lead for the skin, but probably will put him into next week's show. He's marked in seven of the last eight boxes. Make it six of the last eight boxes in this match. Can't make any mistakes with this ball. He and doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> big nine. That's a 140 for Paul Barassa and a 257. Well, he is safely in. No question about that. Well, unless uh, Don Richmond were to throw a double strike. Right. But Let's Bob see. Whitcomb is not in yet. I mean, he still has to fill the strike. The spare leads the skin, remember. Paul Barassa's spare in the 10th. It's a fifty dollars skin here. Seven fill for Bob on the strike. He's uh, past Joe Ashline. One seventeen and a two forty one. So the score to beat for Don Richmond is 241. As you can see, he's at 219 right now, but that does not include the fill in the ninth. You can do it with a f big fill and another mark. Strike oh, wins. that is a big one. Strike wins the skin also. A $50 skin in the tenth for Don Richmond. There you see it kicking out the six pin. He needs three on the strike to get into next week. Wow, and he was low man in the totem pole way back in the fifth frame and missed a couple singles. He thought he was out of it, but look there at this. Oh, oh, wow. 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 That might be the overall winner again. Let's see. Hello, Don Richmond. Welcome to the show. <laughs> if he throws a nine on this ball, he'll be the overall winner. So it's Paul Barassa and Don Richmond coming back next week. What a finish we've had. Triple. Oh, oh, why not? One pin away. And Don Richmond throws 29 pins in the final box, a 140 and a 258 to win it by one over Paul Barassa. Both Don and Paul, of course, come back next week. We'll add up all the money and the pins as well and give you a wrap-up of today's show in a minute. Welcome back to the Londonderry Bowling Center. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. And let's uh, get you over to the numbers for this one and wrap up exactly what happened today on Candlepin Skins. First of all, 
the Skins prize money, and uh, like the match itself, Dan, it was very, very close. $150 and seven skins for Bob Whitcomb, who is not coming back next week. Don Richmond, who is coming back with that great flurry at the end, the double strike in the 10th. He's right up there, too, with $145 to add to his winnings of last week. Paul Barassa gets $80 as well. He'll be coming back. Joe Ashline, uh, all done after his stretch of three weeks in a row with $25 in skins. Here's how the pinfall went. Remember, the top two come back next week. So, as you see, Don Richmond and Paul Barassa with that great finish, just one pin apart. Bob Whitcomb and Joe Ashline uh, have their skins money, but they will not be back next week. Skins was fun, huh? But it was real raw bowling right at the end. Don Richmond come up with 75 pins, the last four boxes to overtake and come back. So Don Richmond comes back next week. So does Paul Barassa. And they will join the next two bowlers in our sequence. Chris, uh, rather, Sean McKinley and Chris Sargent. So we invite you to join us next Saturday for another edition of Candlepin Skins here on the Winds of New England. Don't forget, tomorrow at 12 noon, week two of our first skin, or our first uh, Stars and Strikes singles competition of the season. And until then, from Park Place Lanes, we're here at Londonderry Bowling Center wishing you a good weekend. Bye-bye, everybody.